You know, when I was eight years old, I had my first near-death experience. I was taken to a county hospital in San Jose, California, and basically made a ward of the, of the hospital. I was so far gone in my health that uh, the county took over my health care. I was one year in the hospital. If you can imagine an eight-year-old young boy in the hospital away from home uh, by themselves, basically. And I was in isolation for a bunch of that time. But I was taken away the first night, and they told my parents at the time, we don't expect him to live because he's pretty far gone. I had a kidney disease, I had a lung disease, and I had other problems. And I was pretty much, you know, I was going over the edge. And they kind of warned my parents and told them, you know, don't expect much. So that first night, I was taken in, and they did some needles in my back and took some fluids out of my lungs. And, and then they left me alone in this room all by myself. Eight years old, there's nobody else in the room. It's isolation ward. And there I am, laying there, feeling isolated because I'd never been away from home in my entire life. And now I'm no, no visitors, no parents, no kindly nurse, nothing. And I'm laying there, and I'm fading. I'm really fading. And I, uh, there's a part of me that doesn't care. It's like, it's all right. So I'm laying there in bed, and then the next thing I know in this dark room, it's light. And so I sit up, but not physically. I, I, I'm sitting up. I realize I'm sitting up, but then I realize it's not my body sitting up. It's, it's the me, the spirit, the soul, whatever. I'm sitting up, and I, I didn't really question that. I looked. You know, and there's my body behind me and everything. And, and then this light expands and expands. So the whole room is just light. The darkness is, is gone. It's been destroyed. And I sat there and I was feeling loved and hugged. Here I was in the hospital by myself, getting ready to spend a year. I didn't know at the time, dying. Nobody there, no medical staff come down to check on me, see if I was dying or anything. And I'm staring at this light, feeling no fear, just the opposite, feeling truly loved. I feel like I was being hugged. I feel like the mother of the universe, you know, the divine was embracing me. It was just a beautiful feeling. So I'm sitting there, I don't know how long what was transpiring, but pretty soon... I'm shown this panorama, it's the only word I could say, just a panorama in, in the light. I'm seeing all these scenes. I'm seeing the John F. Kennedy assassination, although I didn't know who he was or anything about the assassination. This is 1954 or 5, something around there. And, uh, and I'm, I'm seeing uh, Vietnam War, but it wasn't, I, there was, I didn't know what the Vietnam War was, but I'm seeing battle scenes with helicopters. I'm seeing myself on the battlefield. I'm seeing my future houses, jobs. I'm seeing my wife, who I, at eight years old, I had not met her yet, right? But I'd recognize her when I did, and I did. So I saw my wife, I saw my children. I saw going out in my life about 50 years. So I'm watching this thinking, well, that's interesting. I'm being shown in the next 50 years. And there was a lot of information. I mean, it was just, and uh, some of it I remembered, like the, the Kennedy assassination when I got, you know, he's elected president. Well, this guy gets killed. I'd, I would know. But there were some things I would only remember just before they happened. It's like, oh, super deja vu. Okay, I knew this. So the first 50 years after that, I'm giving the story away because I do survive. I uh, just didn't want to have a, people hanging on the edge there. But the next 50 years was like a constant deja vu. It was like I, I knew which houses I was going to buy and everything else. In fact, what was odd, when I did meet my wife, she was in high school. She was 14. I was 14. Uh, we started going steady in senior year, 1963. And, but I knew I was going to marry her, even though I was breaking up with her because I knew she had to go to college, I had to go to war, I had to do all this stuff, and I wasn't ready for that. But I knew... But she didn't understand. I could break up with her, but I knew I was coming back. I was going to be my wife. And that sounds crazy to somebody that's in high school when you tell them that, they, they, what are you breaking up for me? Well, well you got to do some stuff first. We got married. I went to Vietnam. Oh, in high school. 
So in high school, I go to the school principal, Mr. Stanga, and tell him, you know, Mr. Stanga, they're going to kill the president in Dallas next week. Okay, Bill. Yeah, okay, Bill. Yeah, all right, go, go back to class. No, I mean, it really, I've seen it in black and white, not color, black and white, just like on the TV screen, right? Black and white. You know, with little Kennedy, you know, Junior, you know, all that stuff, you know, John Junior, Sluton. And uh, then, of course, the next week he's killed, and then everybody gets spooked, right, of course. You couldn't make that kind of prediction today because the FBI and Homeland Security would be at your house. Like, what you know? what are you doing? But back then, I, and there was a lot of things that came along. It wasn't a matter of me having ESP to predict things. I've already was shown. It was just remembering that, yeah, this is what's going to happen, so which was kind of unique. So that first life uh, near-death experience that I had at age eight years old taught me a lot. <music>